Okay, so every now and then uh, you have examples that come up that prove you're going to have Israelites looking like so-called white people. And I think this is a, another one of those examples. The guy you see sitting there to your left, that's uh, Felix Cavallari, right? Felix Cavallari. And he was uh, the lead singer of the group, formerly the Young Rascals. They went from the Young Rascals to the Rascals. Now they had um, a few big hits in the late 60s. Uh, one of their most popular songs was a song called Groovin', which Felix Cavalletti wrote. All right, he, he wrote that song along with his uh, bandmate, uh, uh, Eddie, Brig Eddie Brigatti. Eddie Brigatti and Felix Cavalleri was part of the group, the Rascals, right? So this song, Groovin', and um, if you Google, or rather go to YouTube and put in Groovin', the Rascals, you'll instantly recognize the song, okay? It's a very popular song. So in this interview, Felix is telling the professor of rock, that's the guy to the uh, right, he's telling, them, he's telling him about uh, when he was recording the song with his group. They were in the studio, and Otis Redden happened to be in the building. And Otis Redden was so moved by the voice he was hearing singing, uh, he popped his head into the studio, right, where they were recording the song, and Otis Redden goes, my God, they are white. <laughs> you know, Felix is going to tell the story. So when I heard that, I said, well, I'm going to do a, a, little, a slight little video on that. I mean, for Otis Redding, now, if you don't know who Otis Redding is, again, he goes back to the 60s. He died in a plane crash. His most famous song was, uh, um, what's the name of that song? <sighs> Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, which the reason when you listen to that song, Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, the reason why there's whistling towards the end of the song is because he didn't get to finish it. It was released after his death in the plane crash. He didn't get to finish the song. There was supposed to be one uh, set of uh, lyrics wrote, wrote towards the end of the song and he didn't get to do it. So that's why uh, you hear whistling. You know, he instead of putting those lyrics, he didn't have the lyrics, he just whistled it. And they decided after his death, which was all of a sudden, I'm talking about Otis Redding, they decided to release the song. And the song became a major hit, sitting on the dock of the bay. And by the way, that's pretty much how he died, Otis Redding. Show you that, <laughs> show you that the Heavenly Father is terrible, man. He brought judgment on Otis Redding, and he died... Uh, he died in a plane crash and the plane was sitting on the bay, an icy bay. Okay? <laughs> this, the plane, and you can, uh, if you Google it, you uh, Google Otis Redding death scene, there's the picture right there of the plane tilted, you know, uh, tilted in the icy, the icy bay. Because it was, uh, I think it was uh, the state he died in was um, was uh, um, Wisconsin, if I'm not, Green Bay, somewhere around there, Wisconsin, because they were out on tour. And there was only one survivor of that plane crash. He was part of a group called the Barcades, okay? I forgot the guy's name. Anyway, um, I'm just going to play a portion of this video. Again, fair use. Uh, this is for edu 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 educational content. I'm not making any money off of uh, this man's content, the professor of rock. So I'm just using it for educational purposes. So again, this is another example of how you're going to have Israelites 
looking like the other nations, in this case, Esau. Now, this guy, uh, Felix Cavallari, you can tell by the name, he's of so-called Italian descent. I'm not sure what part of Italy his parents comes from, but he was raised in the Bronx. Um, uh, was it the Bronx or I think it might have been, uh, yeah, I, I believe he was from the Bronx. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The uh, uh, Latin community adopted us. Oh, yeah. See, and, and, and that was huge, you know, because, you know, uh, basically we were the first white act, you know, basically on a, a Atlantic. And that, we got R&B, you got Latin. We're doing okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of shape. people have adopted that song. Is Like even genres like Latin, R&B, Yacht Rock. I've heard that they've, they've even said that that's one of the great Yacht Rock songs. When you recorded... Yeah, when the song Groovin' came out, a lot of people didn't believe that was done by a so-called white act. Okay, they couldn't believe the way the people that did the song, the way they looked. This is back in the uh, uh, summer of 1967. Okay. Spanish, Italian, oh, yeah, French. Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> that was... Yeah, yeah, that song, is, is, uh, it was released in, um, like, like you said, it shows you the Professor Rock, man. He does his homework, I tell you. That's how we're supposed to be. When we represent this gospel, this truth, we're supposed to pull out all the facts, man. Like the, sh like the show Dragnet, one of my favorite shows, Just the Facts. All right, and I remember one, oh, that was the lead singer from the Guess Who. Um, what's his name? Uh, what's the, what the hell is his name? His name is coming and going. Burton Cummings, Burton Cummings. He, he said to, when he was uh, being interviewed by the professor of rock, he looked at him, he said, man, you, you really do your homework, man. Well, that's how we're supposed to be. See, that's the thing with Jake, man. Jake don't, <laughs> Jake could go to do an a interview, like case in point, uh, the, the, that, uh, that YouTube, uh, uh, what's it called, Comedy Hype. It's on YouTube, the, the, the interviewer. He was interviewing uh, Damon Wilson. And a few times, Damon Wilson had to curse him out. He said, man, you really should do your research before you... you you make statements. Basically, Damon Wilson said that to the interviewer. Damon, Damon Wilson from uh, Sanford and Son. So we, you know, when we, you know, when you teach in the subject, you got to be very knowledgeable on the subject. And, and that's something Jake don't believe in. Okay. It's, you know, Jake make a movie, right? <laughs> we always bring that example out. Jake will make a movie, and the movie is set in 1985. It's a period piece. It's set from an event that happened in 1985, right? <laughs> and uh, you're watching the movie, and suddenly you see a vehicle that, let's say the movie is set in 1985, but the movie was made, let's say, a year or two ago, right? And you'll be watching the movie, and you'll see a vehicle drive by in the scene in the movie that was made back in 2020, right? <laughs> or maybe even made the same year, the movie that Jake made that was supposed to take place from an event that happened back in 1985, you'll see a car pass by <laughs> that was made the same year the movie was put out. You can't make this shit up, man, but that's Jake, man, you know? You got to pay attention to details, Jake. Pay attention to details. That's, that's, that's one of the shortcomings of our people, man. They don't pay attention to details. Anyway, let's get back to this. It inspired Smokey Robinson to write Cruisin'. Did you know that? Now tell me this man don't do his research. And I think he had interviewed Smokey Robinson, and Smokey told him, yeah, I was inspired to do Cruisin' by a... The song Groovin' by the by the Rascals. Well, it's, he inspired me to write everything. Yeah. Come on. But he said that. He said, you know, he's going to say, I love it when we're grooving together. And he's like, ah, it's a little too close. I'll say cruising. But that's pretty awesome. 
No, the, the, the relationship, we, we had a kind of a relationship with Motown. You know, Barry yeah. Gordy gave us a lot of accolades, too, saying, like, you know, you guys are you guys are doing all right. But, you know, the best is Otis Redding, you know what I mean? Uh, Otis. Otis uh, so now, listen to this. I got to bring this back. The best is Otis Redding. The, the, the relationship, we, we had a kind of a relationship with Motown. You know, Barry yeah. Gordy gave us a lot of accolades, too, saying, like, you know, you guys are... You guys are doing all right. But, you know, the best is Otis Redding, you know what I mean? Uh, Otis, Otis, uh, see, in, in those days, they didn't have these big signs all over the place. Do not enter. Recording. Yeah. See? So Otis sticks his head in and he goes, my God, they are white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. He was great. Oh, what man. a great guy. Well, you know? there's a reggae. Yeah, that's a funny story, man. That's a funny story. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. On to the next one.